So, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Markus Koshani, and um, today I want to talk about Debian games. I'm a developer from Germany and also a member of the Debian games and Java teams. And I'm also a contributor to the uh, long term support team. Um, yeah, what qualifies me for this talk? <laughs> Um, I have some gaming experience uh, since the 1980s. <laughs> I have been using um, different uh, computers up to now, like the C64, the Amiga 500, all to modern PCs. And yeah, I was a long time uh, gamer, um, enjoyed gaming. But uh, more recently, I have um, become a Debian developer and started to packaging games and starting to maintain them. And nowadays, I don't have much time anymore to, to play games, despite the rumors. Um, in 2012, I created a small website project called uh, linuxubert.de. That's basically a simple website with some statistics and some dedicated servers, uh, multiplayer uh, dedicated servers. Um, basically, it is about, um, you can find almost all dedicated uh, server games um, on this website, uh, which we provide in Debian. And um, well, it was my fun project to learn more about uh, Debian games in general and uh, Linux adm administration. Uh, yeah, in the meantime, I've touched already 400 packages in Debian, mostly Java and uh, Debian games. And um, we probably won't have enough time uh, for this talk, but if you have questions about specific games, um, you can always ask me later, and I will probably be able to answer them. So, what do I want to talk about today? Uh, first of all, I want to give you an overview about all our games in Debian Main, Debian Contrib, and Debian Non-Free. I also would like to uh, present you Game Data Packager. It's basically a tool to cover the fourth category of, of games or games content, which is even worse than non-free. Uh, these are, this is a non-distributable content, which Debian is not allowed to uh, legally distribute. I also want to talk about another project I started in uh, 2013, 2014, it's called Debian Games Blend, and um, how I tried to improve the visibility of games in, um, in Debian. And then I also would like to talk about creating free content and about some ideas for future projects or how you can contribute uh, to games. First of all, uh, the gaming industry is really, really big. Uh, the global game marketplace, according to Gartner.com, a research company, is about $100 billion per year. Uh, there are other numbers and figures that indicate uh, it is only a double-digit figure in the billions, <laughs> but it is still quite high. And it also depends on how they um, uh, how they uh, may I define uh, what what are games and uh, how this marketplace uh, of, of what kind of games this marketplace consists of. They basically say um, take into account mobile games, web games, uh, PC games, console games, but also hardware. So it's quite difficult to say how big the market really is. Uh, successful games attract usually millions of players. Um, when we talk about proprietary games. For example, Blizzard Entertainment, a very, very, very well-known company um, that produced titles like uh, StarCraft, Warcraft, World of Warcraft, and Diablo, um, uh, employs more than 4,500 uh, people. And, um, yeah, well, they um, own or, or earn uh, millions of dollars per month. They had um, two million subscribers for World of Warcraft in the year 2010. 
uh, that was the peak time of the game. And in 2008, they decided to create another next generation MMO. Nobody knew what it was back then. Uh, and they kept it secret. But we discovered in 2014 that they wanted to create something, well, a huge MMO which basically um, should combine multiple aspects of gaming. So it should be a shooter game or a combat game, and you should also could you could also explore um, society and um, uh, trade with other people. It was very very complex, very very complex ideas. But then they decided, okay, it doesn't work. We won't produce it. We stopped the production. We stopped the development, and they terminated everything in 2014. Um, they employed more than 100 people just alone for this game and full time. <laughs> and they used some of the content um, to create another game called Overwatch, which is now the fourth franchise of uh, Blizzard Entertainment. And it also um, attracts more than um, several million of players uh, daily. Um, what it is also worth to note that um, proprietary games receive a lot of extensive news coverage. For example, I discovered last week or two weeks ago uh, a BBC article about uh, Overwatch. And this is usually something you don't see for free and open source software games. Yeah, well, what's the difference in contrast to proprietary games? Uh, most FOSS games are developed by only a single person. And this person is someone who uh, does it just for fun or for educational purposes. Uh, he mostly receives no money at all, perhaps some donations. And um, he even less receives money through uh, crowdfunding or sales or a monthly fee. Um, Successful games in the FOSS world attract several thousand of players, but not millions. And um, the communities are rather small, very small, compared to, let's say, Blizzard World of Warcraft with millions of players. So it is fair to say that FOSS games are a niche. And it, it should not be, um, this should not sound negatively. It's just realistic. So nobody outside this room, perhaps, or in the community knows a lot about games, what games we provide, and how big they really are. And nobody really talks about them in, uh, on major news sites. Uh, we shouldn't really try to compete with uh, these proprietary games. It is not a matter of uh, freedom, but it's more a matter of money, resources, and um, how many people I employ to produce this content and to produce these games. And it's very difficult for FOSS game developers to create such a big game that is recognized by millions of players. So how many different games are there in Debian? I have not counted them by hand. <laughs> I've used um, the Debian games source package and counted all unique games in all of the tasks files and subtracted um, the library packages and also subtracted toy games, which are not really games. So I finally found the number and we have around about 561 plus uh, a few GNOME, KDE and KDE games. So roughly 600. Um, what is most important about Debian Main is that all the content is free software. But not only the code, but also all artwork uh, complies with the DFSG. And um, if you take a closer look, most of the games are written in C and C++. We have very few games who are written in Perl, but 
one well-known game that's Frozen Bubbles. The other one is Pang Zero. We have one Haskell game that's Rank Hat. We have three Java games. Um, Robocode. Robocode is an educational game, a programming game. Uh, we have Freecall, a uh, clone of uh, Colonization, and um, AAA. It's a st strategy game. We have dozens of Python games, mostly uh, based on the Pygame engine. And we have dozens of D games. A few years ago, I didn't know that something like D exists at all. Um, but they are really cool. So if you have time, check out the meta package uh, games slash shoot em ups. Um, they are really special. I like them because uh, it's, an, it's all abstract, abstract shooter games. Um, and I think they are very well written. The problem with D is it is highly unstable, at least in my experience. And we have to deal every release cycle with release critical bugs because something changed uh, with the compiler and uh, they don't work anymore. They, they cannot be compiled from source. So if you know D <laughs> would like to save these games, uh, please contact us. Well, um, Popcorn reports that our most popular games are, have more than 2,000 installations. Uh, our most popular games are uh, Extreme Tux Racer or Zero AD, Super Tux Card, something like that. And, um, well, you should take Popcorn values with a grain of salt because um, it is, this uh, tool is not installed on every computer by default. So it is not clear how many people really use software. Um, and it's also not clear um, when they will uh, most, let's, let's say it the other way, most people play a game and then they remove it from their desktop or from their computer again. Uh, this is in contrast to uh, tools that you daily need like web browsers, mail clients, uh, your packager, your, your archiver, whatever. And so it is hard to say how many people really play these games. Um, PC games definitely dominate in Debian. We have very few web or mobile games. They are almost non-existent. I'm talking about HTML5 games here. In theory, we could add um, HTML5 games, um, for example, uh, Cave Express. Um, supports such a compile option, but then I would also need to fix the mscript package in Debian, which is currently a bit buggy and doesn't work really, really good. So very, very few um, HTML5 um, games in Debian. Uh, if you look for developer tools, you can find them in our game slash dev packages. So if you're interested, for example, in C++ development, uh, you will find a lot of useful libraries in games slash C++ dev. So in my opinion, the pros of uh, FOSS free open source software games is that we can preserve classic games because we have the source code and we can reuse um, artwork, music files, and they are free to use. It's also a great way to learn uh, programming and developing in general. It's quite, quite a fun. As I said before, many developers are people who you know, try to produce a new game or try to create a new game and started by um, coding a game. The difficulty is um, you, you must also be a person who can create game content, who is able to create a good graphic, create a good sound, and only a few people can manage both. Uh, it's something related to the brain. Some people are good at mathematics and others are very creative. So a game creator has to be both at the same time. And he needs to create a game that is fun. So you can be a great developer, but if the game sucks, nobody will play it. 
Yeah, well, on one, uh, one another point, um, our FOSS games and May are very well integrated into Debian. Uh, I've listened to the talk uh, of Simon about Flatpak. It's the easy way to install games, okay. But in my opinion, FOSS games are a way to, um, uh, well, Debian main is a way to, to package really great FOSS games and they um, have the same standard as our other packages. So if you try to package a complex game like UFO Alien Invasion, you basically have to invest the same time as the maintainer of, okay, it's a bit exaggerated, but it's complex enough uh, like, uh, like servers, like Apache server or, uh, or Tomcat servers. So you need to have the know-how to create a dedicated server package, but you also must provide a desktop client package and you must analyze all the code um, if it complies with the DFSG and you have to write a copyright file. And for example, for uh, UFO Alien Invasion, there are 5,000 different uh, graphics and image files in this package. So it is quite hard to, uh, quite hard to find um, or to, to analyze this package. So to invest, you have to invest some time in it. But if you do it, you get a high quality package because everybody knows this file is licensed under this, uh, license, under this license and um, you can reuse it for another project or for something completely different. It don't have to be a game, it could also be uh, your next video or um, slide, whatever. And this is not so something a flat pack would give you. You don't basically, no you know basically nothing about the interiors. Yeah, well, how can we find all those games in Debian? That was a question I asked myself in 2002. It was rather complicated because I had to use some uh, command line tools like aptitude. Um, you can use aptitude search section games and you get all the games in Debian. Okay, but few people know that. Most people will expect that there is something like a software manager application and all the games are visualized in some way. Big icons, I want to sort my games in strategy games, in, uh, in uh, role-playing games, in roguelike games, in shoot-em-ups and so on. And this is something which was not present in 2002 when I discovered Debian. Or, well, well we had Synaptic, I believe, back then, but it's still, it was difficult to find all the games. So a Debian games blend should solve the following problem. It should list all games in Debian main, and it should categorize them in different uh, categories. Uh, at the moment, we have 34 meta packages containing 693 packages. And um, this includes also library packages for game development. Uh, you can take a look. We have a, a home page at Blends Debian Org Games Tasks. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it was very easy to create because someone else did the job already. Um, my goal or my dream is that we create something better, perhaps something listed under games.debian.org. Um, but we need someone with the skills to create such a web page who knows HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and make something more beautiful. Um, how does it work? Uh, creating meta packages is very simple. There are different techniques, but a Debian games blend makes it very easy, or, or the blends framework in general makes it very easy. So you can basically put one line in your Debian rules file, include all the uh, necessary commands, you have to depend on blends dev at Debian control. You have to write a simple control stub file, which contains only mm, the minimum uh, of lines required to, to create a Debian control file. And the rest is simple text files, are simple text files in your task directory, where one line uh, indicates a dependency or a recommendation for one game or a suggestion. 
and then uh, you ran make dist, and everything will automatically be created. Uh, you get all the so all the binary packages, and um, well, that's it, basically. Um, well, some recommendations here. Um, if you're new to Debian games or have never heard of the games made up packages before, please check out Games Finest. These are the 100 recommended games chosen by myself. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, it's because of popcorn value. I've chosen them uh, because I thought unique gameplay, they, they had a unique gameplay. Um, they looked great or, yeah, well, they were simply outstanding in, in some way. So why did I choose 100 packages? When I mentioned this number last time at DEPCON 15, uh, some people rolled their eyes uh, because, yeah, 100, that's, isn't it a bit much? I could also choose 10, the top 10 of Debian games, or the top 25, but what does that mean? It's very subjective. Uh, and I've decided that let's choose 100 games, which are really good, and this will guarantee that people will find, yeah. Um, is there is there a way to have um, default games pre-installed? Just even just a few. I keep being asked for a solitaire and a, the you know the equivalent of Windows games, and I have to install them manually for each newcomer. So I don't know. Do you want to answer the question? Um, what we had. Uh, Short before uh, Stretch was frozen, we had uh, in the installer the selection that you could select the blend mm -hmm. games or others. That's but true. this was killed, unfortunately, and so you need to install the uh, uh, meta package yourself. There's the tasks are there. This is what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. the task is there, but you can't choose it at uh, installer time. Um, you have to use apt, it's apt install games slash finest. And then you will get approximately 10 gigabyte of data. <laughs> it sounds a lot. It sounds much, but if you compare it to modern games, um, a single game can uh, can have more than 40 gigabyte of data nowadays. 10 gigabyte is nothing, and this we are talking about 100 games here. Um. Also, um, I, I think the, um, the default install of like the GNOME desktop or the KDE desktop used to include um, like Minesweeper, ah. Solitaire, that kind of thing. But yeah. I think those have been deliberately taken out because the relevant te desktop teams wanted to kind of prune down how much they were installing. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I don't know about KDE, but at least in GNOME, if you search the overview for like Solitaire, um, GNOME Shell has integration with GNOME software. So if you just type in Solitaire, um, among the search results will be, hey, you can install this Solitaire package from apt. Um, so it, it, it is reasonably easy to get these things like on demand. Um, so first of all, I've um, deliberately excluded uh, KDE or GNOME games because I didn't want that users pull in complete desktop environments. KDE games and GNOME games depend on the whole uh, desktop environment. So you would mix two different, completely different desktop environments, and I didn't yeah. want that. So they are only suggested. And all those meta packages, you're right, they are really big sometimes, or solitaire games are under um, games uh, board, I believe. You won't be interested in all of them. That's for sure. It's mainly intended to be used. Um, you, you look at the meta package description and you could install them separately. But you could also say, okay, forget it. I just want to take a look and let's install all of the games. And then you could easily remove those that are unimportant to you. Uh, because the meta packages don't depend on them. They recommend them only. So it is very easy to just remove the ones you don't like and you can keep the ones you like. That's all about it. I think also 
uh, if you seek for Solitaire, then you need to know that Solitaire exists. And so people end up with playing only Solitaire. And uh, the meta packet is suggesting things you never heard about before. That's the point. More questions? OK. Yeah, well, it's, that was mainly um, the main reasons for Dating Games Blend. Uh, what else could we do? Um, I always wanted to create a live image of Debian. And, well, I tried to figure out how it works. I studied uh, all the relevant packages, but I never uh, could get it to work. Uh, it never worked for me, at least. So I gave up. But this is one thing I want to learn. But maybe someone else in this room is interested in creating a live image. And I think it would be a very cool idea because let's take Fedora, for example. They call it spin. They have a game spin. We could also create such a spin. Let's, let's rename it and call it Debian Games. OK, that was basically main. Um, I have chosen to include only games from Maine because I think Debian is all about free software. Of course, I could include contrib games and non-free games and, well, basically every game that ever existed. But I wanted to draw a line. I wanted to make sure that we only recommend uh, free games. So what are Debian contrib games now? So the policy says every package in Contrib must comply with the DFSG. So all packages in Contrib are free software. But they are there because they either build or either build depend on something non-free or they need something non-free to function. And in this case, it is the, the function word which is important. It is very common um, in Debian that we have a lot of free engines, but they require non-free content. Uh, for example, um, years ago we had um, Sauerbraten in uh, Debian Contrib. That's a first-person shooter. And, well, the main content or the, the image files, are, most of them are non-free because they are licensed under uh, non-commercial clause licenses, or uh, they may not be uh, modified. Um, very interesting is that, for example, Richard Stormont thinks that the art in the game is not software. It is not ethically imperative to make the art free, though free art is an additional contribution. These are his words about non-free games. So in Debian, it is imperative that free games also have free content. <laughs> and otherwise, they can't enter the Debian main archive. Um, but he has a point. I mean, are PNG files really software? Some people in Debian argue that way. They say, you must provide the source for PNG files. So a P PNG file or JPEG file is only uh, it's not the preferable form of modification. Maybe the developer has something better, an SVG file, or, well, an uncompressed uh, sound file. But it's very hard to tell if this is really true. And some people like me, I, I, I found a PNG file on the internet. It was licensed under a Creative Commons license, share alike. I've used it, I modified it, and I used it for another game. I, I never had the SVG file. So does it, is, this an, is this a reason to call a game non-free? Hmm. Well, uh, the problem is, or the problem exists because in 2004, we wanted to include ScumVM into Debian. ScumVM is a very well-known uh, application where you can play old adventure games. And back in 2003, 2004, um, the FTP masters decided uh, that an engine without free content cannot enter the main archive. 
So the lead developer of ScumVM at this time um, asked uh, to a company um, if they would uh, license, relicense uh, one of their games. And so beneath, beneath a steel sky and um, the flight of the Amazon Queen entered the archive. They are BSD licensed basically. And that was the reason ScumVM could be moved into the main archive. Because remember, uh, ma only main comprises Debian. Basically, Contrib and non-free are not part of Debian. We only provide the resources. Um, well, on the other hand, we have a lot of emulators in Debian, free emulators, very good ones. And the question is, do we have free content for them? Uh, I don't know, but they are in main, all of them. And um, I believe, or I fear, we treat some packages differently than others. And I wonder if we really serve the free software world very good if we say a completely free engine is not part of Debian, although it is, also, although it is free software. And um, well, some people disagree with my opinion, and so we have reached a consensus in our team at least, and with the FTP masters. We believe that engines can go in main even without free data, also being in main, as long as usable data exists. So that means you don't have to package uh, free content. It is enough if you know it exists somewhere on the internet. So for me, Contrib is a staging area. These are all games free software, but they are not perfect because they don't provide free content. And you can either say, okay, forget about the free content, we just take the non-free content, like Mr. Stormont said, it's not ethically imperative, or you can say, let's create free content. Um, let's talk about Sauerbraten. Uh, Sauerbraten is a beautiful German word. Uh, it's a dish. <laughs> and, um, well, here you can see some potato dumplings and red cabbage. And that's what actually Sauerbraten is. It's also the name of a first person shooter developed by a developer with the nickname Adapel. That's Dutch and literally translates to Earth Apple or more commonly known word in English is potato. <laughs> um, so it makes all sense if you know this information. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe it was two years ago that I decided I wanted to change something about Sauerbraten. Sauerbraten, the engine was free, Zlib licensed, but the content was partly free, but mostly uh, non-free. So, um, it was one bug reporter who pointed me to free content, which was assembled by Alan Sakai, uh, who works or worked for uh, the Mozilla Foundation, and who created a really cool project. Um, he compiled, or he used the Sauerbraten engine, compiled it to JavaScript with the mscripten, with mscripten, and you could run the game in the Mozilla web browser. There's even a link, maybe I can show it to you later. Uh, you can play Sauerbraten in your Mozilla browser. It's, yeah, JavaScript. And, well, he wanted to create a free game, of course, so he asked some of the developers if they uh, would relicense um, some of their models and graphics, and as I said, some of them were already free. And I discovered this uh, package, slightly modified it so that it worked with uh, the Cube 2 engine in Debian, and we got Cube 2 data. Um, only recently, someone contacted me and filed the first bug reports. Uh, I mean, upstream bug reports, because now I'm an upstream developer, basically. It's 
uh, I'm the upstream developer of Cube 2 Data, and he, well, he discovered some bugs, and you know, we enabled some new game, uh, uh, game, game modifications. Um, he introduced some new files. Well, and now you've basically started a new project, a free project. And uh, it's, it's just a demo game. It's not complete, but it's playable. You can use it, and you can use it um, freely to showcase uh, Debian or gen in a, a free first-person shooters in general. Um, there are several websites dedicated to uh, free artwork. Uh, one of them is uh, opengameart.org, and the other one is, for example, uh, freesound.org. Um, example number two. L General. L General was also in Contrib, but there was no content at all, uh, no game content at all. So it was basically useless <laughs> for a gamer. Uh, L General is a clone of uh, Panzer General, which is a game from the uh, 90s, uh, developed by an American uh, company. Uh, it was a very popular game. It's a classically, classical uh, strategy game uh, with hexagon fields. And you could basically play, uh, well, Germany and World War II and conquer the whole world. The main objective was, well, if you were really good in this game, you could conquer Washington. <laughs> yeah, great. That's the reason why it is still on uh, the index in Germany. <laughs> <You're not laughs> it's no joke. <laughs> so, well. Don't mention the war. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I um, asked Steve McHuber, who created a, a World War I modification, if he would relicense his uh, art files, artwork, and um, he, he did. I could reach him. His uh, email address was still intact. And still, um, yeah, well, it basically converted all his graphics into a format which was uh, compatible with the general engine. And here we are. We have, we have some content. I didn't develop it. I just asked another person if he would like to relicense his work. And most people are very generous when it comes to this kind of question. Well, and so we had another content package. So how do we solve these non-distributable problem? Um, we could, as I said, um, create our own content, or we create um, or we use a tool to download all these bad content, non-distributable, and this tool is called Game Data Packager. The main drivers are Simon and Alexandre. Um, it is basically a tool written in Python 3 that scans the upstream data and creates, creates hashes of each file, so they are all identifiable, and then downloads all the um, all the information, all the uh, the source files, and creates a Debian package. But you, as the user, must um, accept the license. So basically, it's outside of Debian. So the tool the tool is free software, but you must ensure that the license is okay for you. It's um, it has a very simple command line interface. Basically, nothing can go wrong. You, you just type game data packager and the name of, of the game content you want to download. And currently, we support 213 games and game variants. Um, Non-free. Well, this is very easy. Non-free are all packages which are encumbered, encumbered by patents uh, or other legal issues that make their distribution problematic. Yeah. Um, are you OSGameClone.com to find free endpoints to build non free content? So it takes a little bit three years when the original release is? Yeah. Um, game data package is really helpful here, but also works with non package engines. Would it be okay in the freedom trademark sense to create a game clone? Uh, 
meta package for, for um, game data packager. Uh, so the idea behind game data packager is, um, well, that you must, that you can only, uh, that you create uh, packages for your use, for your users alone. And um, I don't intend to create a meta package, but everyone else is free to, to create such a meta package. Um, I'm personally not interested in it. But of course, yeah, you can file wishlist box reports against game data packager and um, request this feature, or you can uh, add games yourself. It is not very difficult. Game data packager uses uh, YAML files, and um, contribution is really simple. Just check out the existing files, and you can contribute um, new, new games. And of course, you can also package something um, where, uh, no, where no engine exists in Debian um, at the moment. No problem. I, I'm not sure if I have uh, correctly answered the question, but I maybe come back to this later. Uh, yeah, the most popular non-free package is Steam. Oh, <laughs> because uh, yeah, as it, it has more than 5,000 um, installations. That is more than two times uh, what the most popular free software uh, game has on Debian. Uh, yeah, why is it that all people talk about Steam? Um, Steam is a very big distribution platform. So it uh, has more than 125 million registered accounts, and there are more than 2,000 native Linux games available, proprietary Linux games available. But also, some games are completely free, um, and they provide a means for uh, free software developers to get some money. So you can buy their game uh, on, on the Steam platform and um, they receive the money for it. Yeah, well, Steam is, uh, it's not my kind of thing because I'm more interested in um, fixing um, packages from main because I can't really fix anything in Steam. Uh, Steam is completely, it's a binary blob at the client and I can't do anything about it. But I acknowledge that it is very important that people can play um, their favorite game. There, there's always a time you want to play a specific game, like it was World of Warcraft for me uh, seven years ago. But I played it with wine. I was probably the only one who played it with wine in my guild. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there are times you want to play a specific game. Okay, it's fair enough. And in this regard, Steam is very help helpful, and it's better. Uh, Steam is uh, the people play Steam games on uh, Debian or on Linux than on another uh, operating system, in my opinion. Okay, I, uh, uh, some key points about the uh, Debian games team. Um, I joined the team in 2012. Uh, my first experience was very unpleasant <laughs> because nobody wanted to sponsor my packages. <laughs> or review them, and without help from outside, without um, developers like Adrian Glaubitz and uh, Winston Chang, I would probably not stand here. <laughs> this really sucked. Um, but uh, nowadays the situation is reversed. I could sponsor packages, but there are no people who <laughs> want, to <laughs> want to contribute something. That's why I'm here. Yeah, some stats. Um, you can see that in 2006 to 2009, we had a lot of contributions on our uh, mailing lists for the discussions, and they were equally distributed. So we had some contributors, and yeah, well, it looks quite good. Then between 2010 and 2011, you see one blue guy, <laughs> Mr. Paul Weiss, <laughs> who contributes regularly on uh, Devin Devil Games. But um, the contributions declined over time, and we are here now. We need to change that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. Um, well, th this is another um, uh, graph from the package games developer list. This is our bug mailing list. And I started to uh, reply to some bug reports in 2012. And here, the 
uh, purple graph, that's about this, uh, this is game data packager. It's basically Alexander who fights wishlist bugs against uh, game data packager. But well, yeah, it increased a little bit. We are better now in uh, fixing bugs and we respond to bug reports. And this is my uh, chart which I have painted on my wall. <laughs> it's about bug fixes and um, well, again, it shows that we have improved a little over time. So, yeah. Um, I've created another chart uh, in this um, team uh, statistics which uh, displays uh, the relation between how many maintainers are working for one package, and mostly it's one. Do you know this graph, maintainers per um, package? I've put the, the no, uh, link no. to, into uh, IRC uh, room boo, maybe. No. Oh, we can show it later, but okay, this is quite interesting and it should, yeah, maybe finish your talk and then I'll show you. Okay. No, I've never heard of it before. Last but not least, um, ideas for future projects. Uh, first of all, it's not very difficult to contribute something uh, to Debian games. J first of all, just play the games. Blog about your experiences. That is very helpful. Report, report bugs and fix them. And um, what you also can do is help to improve desktop and app data files and icons. It's a very simple task, but we need better icons. You can s we have some games which with ugly icons, but this, th this is the first thing people will rec recognize. Um, and they decide, hmm, that's an ugly icon, must be an ugly game. So you can easily change that by providing a better icon. Very simple. Uh, help to maintain existing packages. If you are already a Debian uh, maintainer, um, we would like to welcome you. We could also create a Debian Games Live project. I have told, uh, talked about that before. We could move blends.debian.org to games.debian.org and improve the web page. And we could also create a game content database. I had in mind something similar to codesearch.net, but for artwork. We already provide uh, good copyright files in many cases. So it would be very easy to say, okay, uh, I need a, uh, an image about, I don't know, uh, some, uh, some house or some texture, um, and it should be a created license under a created common license. This would be the perfect database. It doesn't exist yet. Uh, last but not least, we could also create a promotional gaming video, uh, like it is very common um, uh, in the gaming world, where we just showcase in one minute um, what games we have and what, uh, what cool games we have and yeah, why you should play them. That would be really cool. So that's it from my side and uh, thank you for listening. Um, whoever is interested uh, later on when, when we uh, leave the show here, um, there is currently a project based on the famous Open Pandora, a successor called the Pyra. And fortunately, I was able to bring a prototype here. Uh, it's a gaming console uh, based on uh, Debian Stretch. <laughs> so uh, it's quite a nice thing that there uh, exists such a thing. Um, and you can look at it, I have it here. It runs currently in frozen bubbles. And yeah, I put it on my desk and everybody who likes can see it and touch it and play with it. I'm not related to the project itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we, we can show it to the camera, yeah, maybe. Um. And is it on the camera now? <laughs> Very cool. Too high, too low? Okay. Uh, it's not open hardware, unfortunately, uh, because the license is not completely free. So uh, as far as I know, you get all the uh, schematics and PCB and so on. But uh, it's uh, not, let's say, open hardware license or something. At least for software developers, that's quite okay because, you know, all the... Uh, pin connections and so on, everybody kernel hacker or, or device uh, driver hacker uh, needs to know, uh, but it's a non-commercial something. Um, 
So not really open hardware, no. I might, might perhaps show the graph okay. quite quickly here. Uh, what's, what this graph shows is uh, the version control system contribution of maintainers and about 200 packages are only touched by a single person in the game, uh, games team. About 130 packages are uh, touched by two persons and so on. So we have this kind of hyperbolic graph mm -hmm. and it's similar in, in Debian uh, mid team, a little bit, bit better, but it should be like in, in the Perl team where you have kind of that graph. So you have a minimum of packages only by maintained by one. It exactly. should be the goal. That would be optimal, yeah. yeah. I agree. Meta discussion, pardon. Uh, uh, does it show the people really maintaining the package or the ones that are mentioned in the control file? No, no, this is our real commits. Okay. It are commits and I strike out uh, commits below five, so it's a random commit. But uh, the, the real question you should ask is, uh, does it have a time scale? Because in Debian Mate we have a, a better uh, distribution of two maintainers, but the fact, in fact, they, it's a package some, uh, uh, built by somebody else and took, taken over by me. So it's also a single maintained package. So, but yeah, in, in the Perl team you see where it should, should go and we, we sh should have a four eyes principle for packages and this is definitely no four eyes principle. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you all for your attention, and that's it for the Devin Games talk. See you around.